right, happy Friday the 13th to you all. Everybody says it's an unlucky day, but uh, it's a lucky day for me. I've got a paycheck or two to go pick up. <laughs> it's always a good day. Uh, I've actually got a uh, channel subscriber meetup this morning at my usual breakfast place at uh, World Bakery. Um, a fine gentleman that I met during the uh, Cannonball Run back in June uh, out in California uh, is in town today. Uh, he's riding back through, I think, uh, from my understanding, uh, from Florida. Uh, I didn't catch what bike he was on. I think he mentioned it, but uh, my short-term memory, little rat brain, can't remember. Um, <laughs> the uh, stay, uh, he's, uh, where is he? He said he checked into a hotel right over there off of Silver and I-10, so uh, literally it's just right there next to the uh, bakery, so that's great. I'll uh, go over there and have breakfast with him this morning. I told him I'd be there about 8.15 and it's uh, 7.55 right now, so I might be a couple minutes late. Pretty sky this morning. Variable clouds, uh, kind of middle of the road weather today it's pretty humid right now 95 percent humidity or something close to the dew point but i think our highs today are only supposed to be mid 80s something like that under 90 degrees it's great right now it's mid 60s high 60s feels fantastic 67 out here i don't know i like it so i spoke with kaufman's exhaust or you know emailed them uh, talked to wyatt over there and he's working on a uh, prototype exhaust for this Hunter. So that's great. I should uh, hopefully have that sometime, you know, soon. Maybe next week, who knows. Uh, I'll put the shorty on here, see how it looks. And then he also mentioned that they've got a new baffle design that does away with the O-rings. So, you don't need to rebuild them periodically and put new O-rings in them. It's just a, a metal baffle, but that baffle was secured with a circlip and a couple of high temperature O-rings, one on the inner flange and one on the outer flange of the baffle. So anyway, over time, those O-rings, wow, he's going fast enough, isn't he? Right into slower traffic. Calm down, dude. Uh, the temperature would break up. Look how close it's fall on this guy. Within like a foot at 70. What a complete tool. So the heat would break down those O-rings and cause the baffle to rattle in there just a little bit. And the one on my Rebel is making a little bit of noise. It's not bad, uh, but it's starting to make kind of a, a tinging sound at certain RPM. The lower RPMs are generally where you hear it. You don't hear it so much at a uh, high RPM. So anyway, they're sending me a rebuild kit for a couple of the shorties that I have right now. And he wants to send me their newer design of the Thunder for the Rebel and potentially a shorty or two so I can take a look at them, see what I think, and give them my feedback. And uh, I'll definitely do a video on those, you know, the installation and comparison and all that. So that'll be interesting. Uh, I'm most anxious about the shorty for this though, just to see how it affects the sound and the looks of the bike. This exhaust has a decent tone to it, but I noticed that it's kind of huffy sometimes, huffy, poppy, and uh, I don't, it's just the way the baffle is set up in it. Uh, and apparently this one does not have any batting. Uh, it's just mechanical baffles in there. Uh, I took it off and I was test fitting a shorty that I had sitting on the shelf just to see what it would look like. And I looked in this exhaust and it's just a, a simple mechanical baffle, you know, a lot like a car muffler would have. So there's nothing to rebuild. It should last pretty much forever. But I like the look and the sound of those Kaufman exhausts a whole lot better. So we'll see. And when I do that, I'll already be working on the exhaust and doing other stuff on the bike. So what I'll do is I'll pull the uh, whole exhaust off of this thing and I'll put my titanium header wrap on there. I've got uh, the DEI black titanium wrap that I'll cover up the header with. 
just down to the catalytic converter that's you know right there below the gear shift or the uh, brake pedal then I'll put the Kaufman's on there and I'll also install my fuel X controller uh, I've got the fuel X light so that will help tune the engine a little bit and prevent it from running too lean with the custom exhaust and custom intake these Euro 5 motors are already quite lean so I don't want to damage it by running it too hot too lean Apparently that Fuel X controller is the cat's meow when it comes to low speed throttle response on these bikes. The Hunter already has a different throttle map than the Meteor uh, and the Classic. So it's already got a little bit more sporty feel to it, but owners that have installed the Fuel X Lite or the Fuel X Pro, whatever the full version is, they say that it makes the low end response even better. Uh, it pulls better and uh, it also helps with the top end because it sends different readings to the ECU and fattens up the, the mix a little bit to where it's got more power for you know, climbing hills or sustained high speeds, so that's cool. I'm concerned how that's gonna affect fuel economy. I'd, I'd rather not dent the fuel economy and bring that down, but we'll find out how it goes. I've got a pretty good baseline now for what normal fuel economy on this is. So I'll have some metrics to compare when I uh, upgrade with the Kaufman's and also the Fuel X. As long as I can keep my wrist out of it and not run much faster than I normally do, then the uh, comparison should be reasonable. The other thing I'd like to do eventually, when it comes back in stock, is order the 16 tooth front sprocket for this. So those rubber damp sprockets are out of stock at Hitchcock's in the UK right now. I'm waiting for the new stock to show up and then I'll order that sprocket and two or three other things for this from them. That way it just comes in one shot. The other thing I want to get is a turn signal reminder. There was a company that I used to purchase from there in the UK called Smidzy, which stood for Sorry Mate, I Didn't See You. And they had the their TSR, which is turn signal reminder, and it just beeps whenever you got your signal on and the brake is not depressed. And uh, the logic circuit in it would make it louder if it had been going for more than a certain amount of time. So basically, if, it, if you didn't have your brake on to cancel the beep sound while your signal is running, after it beeps, I don't remember what it was, 20, Oh, wait, there's not enough room behind me, cheese dick. Complete shit. Uh, after 20 beeps or something like that, it would make a higher trill sound. And then you could touch the brake and it would cancel or, you know, obviously you turn your signal off, dummy, because you left your signal on. So that's the whole purpose, is to keep you from uh, leaving your signal on accidentally and then someone thinks you're making a turn and they pull out in front of you. So, sorry, mate, I didn't see you. Or, in that case, sorry, mate, I did see you, but you forgot what you were doing. Anyway, that company was forced to shut down, as rumor has it, because the sound that they made on those little beepers was too close to the sound of a crosswalk sound. And I don't know if anyone was inadvertently injured by that and you know walked out into traffic because somebody's bike was beeping, or if it was just one of those proactive knee-jerk government overreach things but anyway the, the UK government said no you can't make these anymore and the company went out of business so I don't know anyway there's a new company I forget the name of it I'll throw the picture up here Hitchcock is selling this reminder beeper that does essentially the same thing I'm presuming uh, the, it's got all the same listed features but the format looks different uh, the footprint is slightly different so I'm presuming it's a different company I don't know it's like 35 bucks whatever that's great 35 bucks keeps you from forgetting your signal is flashing. And I've caught myself doing it on this several times. Uh, I think that I've canceled it and I haven't. And the gauge is just far enough down here that unless you really look down at it, you might not see that turn signal indication flashing in the bottom corner. Uh, so having that audible beep is a, a good safety reminder. The last order I made of those Smidzy 
beepers before they went out of business about know, five, six years ago, whatever it was. I ordered three of them and I put them on several different bikes. I think I harvested one back off of the Yamaha FC6R before I sold that. I might have that in my parts bin in the garage. But I put one on my Honda 500X. Nice. Uh, Honda 500X, the little C3 scooter, and the FC6 all at the same time. Oh, I heard back from Auto and Gina in India, and I need to compare my shopping cart price to what they're quoting me, but they were saying almost $600 to ship that stuff from India. I had uh, you know, a dozen things in my cart, give or take. It was the engine guard. Uh, I think I had a couple of cheap pannier mounts and some other stuff in that order that I just wanted to try out. But the main thing I was after was that engine guard that I could swear when I made that cart and I was ready to check out, it was only 250 bucks and they're wanting like 570, I don't know what it was. I don't think so. Shipping from India is not that expensive. And I got stuff off of eBay from India sellers and you know it was free shipping or you know very cheap $20 shipping something like that I'm not paying 300 bucks for shipping so if I can't get that uh, stuff from Auto and Gina the the rack or the the guard that I really prefer then I'll probably go with a Hepco and Becker I looked at that and it's got it, the lower delta shape that I'm after so it, the main thing is the lower bar uh, I want it in a position where I could put uh, flip down highway pegs so when I'm out on longer road trips I can stretch my legs for a couple minutes and take the pressure off of my knees and my hip flexors and all that And then the upper part of the, the hoop, I want to install a set of small driving lights like Denali, probably D2s. Uh, I've got, I think I still have two sets of those in the garage. I've also got a couple sets of the DM, uh, the mini or micro, whatever they are. But those are really small. Uh, and that's a consideration on this bike. Not so much for space, but power. Uh, the charging system on this is a little bit Elusive, I don't know what the output is. The the manual says some crazy low number, like, I'll throw the stats up here, but I think it's 150 watts or 180 watts or something total. But they list it at a very low RPM, like 1500 RPM. So I don't know if it makes more at higher RPM or not. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so if there's only 180 watts or something like that to work with, well, you gotta be careful and judicious about your uh, power consumption. Hey, there's the guy at the bike, I guess. Um, and I'm going to cheat right here. You guys didn't see this. Blank, it didn't happen. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes. It'll be okay. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he's set up for cross country. Nice. Howdy. All right, so uh, Emil and I just finished up having breakfast here at uh, World Catering Bakery, and uh, we're going to head over to my warehouse for a few minutes. Uh, he and I were chatting. Uh, he said that he's been looking at the uh, Rebel DCT uh, and was real interested in that. And I said, well, hell, man, come on over to the warehouse and sit on mine and uh, ride it around, do whatever. Uh, so we're going to head over there. Uh, he's going to be in town for the next couple of days, uh, or, you know, in Texas, I should say. Uh, he's going to head to San Antonio on his way through and stay with some family out there for uh, he was originally planning for just maybe tomorrow but I told him the uh, eclipse is happening tomorrow as well he's he didn't even know about it I'm like all right cool man something else to do in San Antonio so he's on his versus and uh, He's doing quite a road trip on that. Uh, he started in, uh, can't remember where he said it was, Missouri or something like that. And he went all the way up to uh, Virginia and then uh, back down to, 
to the Florida Keys and then now he's come back up out of the Keys and going across the country uh, headed west back to California. <laughs> he said riding through here uh, in this area he recognized uh, all these roads and uh, stuff from watching my vlogs. It's funny. He's like, man, I was having deja vu and I haven't been here. <laughs> ah, the weather is fantastic today. I hope it's this clear tomorrow. So I was considering well, basically following him out to San Antonio uh, on a delay, but uh, I might go out to San Antonio tomorrow to watch the eclipse because that's the nearest major city to me that's in the path. Now I could go, you know, somewhere a little bit kind of, what would it be, southwest of Houston area, not quite as far as Corpus or whatever, but somewhere in between here and, uh, you know, San Antonio, but on the diagonal path that the uh, eclipse is going to happen to watch that but it's a short event it's only going to be you know four and a half minutes or something like that for totality and it's happening just about noon tomorrow This weather's fantastic. Emil's probably feeling right at home with this weather. This is how the weather is in California almost all the time. It's very rare for Houston to feel like this. We only get it for about two or three weeks total every year. <laughs> it's usually just hot and crappy or slightly less hot and rainy. All right, we have arrived. I'm gonna show off my uh, messy storage unit of an office uh, warehouse to uh, Emil. <laughs> I'll pull the Rebel out and fire that up, let him uh, roll that thing around the neighborhoods here, see what he thinks about it. Okay. All right. Check my mail. I haven't been here in two weeks. Been a little while. All right. So Emil's going to take off on my uh, Rebel DCT. I kind of ran him through the controls, showed him how to operate it, and uh, he's going to give it a shot. I think he'll like it. He said he hasn't ridden a DCT before, uh, but he's watched a lot of videos on it. And, uh, you know, he's watched my videos, obviously. And he's been looking at these. Uh, he and I are both vertically challenged. Uh, I didn't ask him what his height is, but I think he's, he's about 5'6", 30 inch inseam, just like me. So anyway, let him run that around, have some fun with it. And then uh, when he comes back, I'll uh, let him take my, uh, my hunter uh, out for a ride. See what he thinks about the little, uh, little bike, small bore fun. What'd you think? Good? Yeah. It's good fun. It's got a lot of torque. Yeah, I had a couple of torque for a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, Emil and I hung out here at my warehouse for a while, and he's uh, on the road headed towards San Antonio now. Uh, he's going to head on out there and uh, stay with some family, and uh, we're going to try to meet up potentially tomorrow. Uh, depending on where I go for the uh, viewing of the eclipse. So I told him that if I make it out to San Antonio, I'll give him a call, let him know where I'm going to be. Otherwise, uh, I might end up somewhere southeast of San Antonio, southwest of Houston, or kind of west of Houston, I guess, trying to find it. So anyway, uh, I will catch up with you all later. <laughs>